Hello again with a second video talking about viruses. In this video, we're going to explain viruses at the second level, which is going to be a little bit more scientific using more scientific terms. If you at any point find that this video is a little bit, a little bit confusing or is talking about things that you don't understand, it might be a good idea to go to the previous video, level one, where you get an introduction to the ideas that we're going to talk about right now. So in the previous video, we talked about, we mentioned that viruses are pretty much boxes that contain information that it contains the instructions on how to build another virus. These viruses have abilities to attach to cells and penetrate these cells and get copies of, the, of themselves, and they can infect other cells. Let's talk a little bit more, with, use more scientific terms. So the two major components of a virus is the surrounding shell, and this is usually known as the capsid, and the inner you know, in, uh, sheet of instructions, which is known as the genetic material. Genetic comes from gene, which relates to generation, um, that is formation, genesis, the creation of things. Genetic material is the information needed to form more of these viruses. Without genetic material, the cell would not be able to figure out how to build such a virus. Without the surrounding capsid, the box, this virus cannot move from one cell to the other. It cannot enter a cell or exit a cell, which is interesting. Now, these virus, now this capsid is made of proteins. And proteins are complex molecules that can, you know, achieve different uh, purposes. The main purposes a protein can achieve is either a structural purpose or functional. What does that mean? A structural component means it's just there as a building block. It's just like a wall that surrounds the genetic material, just like the box. But functional, it's pretty much like a tool. Like the proteins on the surface of the virus that allowed it to attach to the cell. So the function here is attachment. Or the drill that allowed for penetration. So these proteins are, again, complicated molecules that can either achieve a structural or a functional purpose, sometimes both. And they are surrounding this virus. The genetic material inside is made out of nucleic acids. The word nucleus means seed because they are inside and acid is because they are acidic substances, which goes back to chemistry. You don't, you don't need to think about it too much to understand it. What are nucleic acids and how do they record information? How are there molecules that record information? Before we go to that, let's summarize. Proteins mainly are for structure and function purposes, whereas nucleic acids are for storage of information. The nucleic acid is a string okay it's just like one string of material and it's pretty much like a scroll one where you you know record information on but it only can fit one letter each time so instead of a regular piece of paper where you can, you know, write an entire paragraph. In this string is just one word extending all along that string. And there are letters. It's just one big word, apparently. But in reality, it's not. Let's 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 rephrase. Let's think about it. Imagine that this is the sheet of instructions, and you want to write it down on a very thin 
uh, roll of paper like this, like a cheat sheet. So you want to move all of these words into that, you know, roll of paper. The Remember, this sheet of information contains instructions on how to build the box. It contains instructions on how to build, to build the capsule. So it contains instructions on how to build protein. This information is stored on a nucleic acid, which is a big string where you write one letter at a, at a time. So letters are like this, A, T, C, G, for example, etc. And this entire information sheet is recorded as one big word. Then this information can be read to create the capsid protein. And it also can be read to create a copy of that string. So the cell uses this instruction sheet to produce the protein shell of the virus and also to copy another instruction sheet to put it inside the virus. And this is the purpose of nucleic acids, of genetic material. They need to be read and they need to be copied. The process of reading is known as translation. Why translation? The word translation means we are changing something from one language to the other. And this is pretty much what we are doing. We are changing it from the language of the you know, nucleic acid of the genetic material to the language of protein. This is pretty much what we are doing. Whereas copying is known as transcription. Transcribe or transcription, which is another word that kind of means trans, which means transition, moving, and scribe, moving the word into another scribe, into another piece of paper. So this is copy. So what the cell does, once it gets infected by a virus, the virus uses its capsid to attach to the cell, drill into it, and inject its genetic material. This genetic material is used to translate into another capsid and transcribe another piece of genetic material and then assemble them together to create another virus. More and more viruses are created, they eventually leave the cell. This is pretty much the scientific terms of the objects that we talked about. The, there is more complexity to this process which requires understanding of what's known as molecular biology, the biology of small molecules. But that can be a subject of a different um, video. Now, this genetic material can either be made of something called DNA or RNA. And I think many people know these abbreviations. These are just describing what kind of material it's, it's made of. DNA is short for deoxyribonucleic acid. We know why it's nucleic, because it means seed. It's inside the cell or inside the um, virus. Deoxy means it doesn't have oxygen, and ribo is, is, is a type of a sugar to which this is attached. It's just describing the chemical structure. RNA is just ribo, nucleic acid. So this guy has oxygen on it. In the next video, I'm going to talk more about the details of these two different types of genetic material. But it's important to understand that some viruses contain D 
DNA inside, other viruses contain RNA inside. So there are DNA viruses and RNA viruses. Our cells contain both DNA and RNA, and they are able to make both DNA and RNA. So when a DNA virus infects the cell, the cell needs to translate this DNA into protein to create the wall of the virus, the capsid. And also it needs to copy more DNA, transcribe, and put them together to make a virus. When it's an RNA virus, the process is the same. This RNA is used to make protein and then make more copies of the RNA. Now, what is the difference then? There's a big difference between DNA and RNA in terms of what they, the purpose of them is. Inside a cell, we pretty much do the same. We pretty much do the same as viruses. The cell contains inside of itself genetic material that contains instructions on how to build more cells. And it has a wall of that cell, the plasma membrane. So a cell is technically a complicated virus, but there's much more to it. Where, where does the RNA go? Now, this DNA is stored inside the cell in a specific location known as the nucleus, the seed. Because if you look at a cell from afar, it will contain this internal structure that looks like a seed, you know, like a fruit seed. Inside the seed, there's the DNA of the cell. Now, translating the DNA into protein, translation, requires that the information inside the nucleus on the DNA be read and converted into a protein. However, this process happens outside the nucleus, not inside. This process needs to happen outside the nucleus. So instead of taking the DNA outside the nucleus, which is a complicated task, what the DNA does is it creates a copy of itself and sends it out, kind of a message. It's pretty much like you work in a company, in a factory, let's say, that makes um, different types of tools. And in this factory, there's a vault that contains the instructions of every tool that the, the factory makes. It contains all of the instructions. Now, instead of going in the vault and pulling all of these instructions at once when you wanna make one tool, for example, you wanna make a hammer, that's a very bad hammer, so whatever. You wanna make a hammer and this factory makes all sorts of tools makes hammers, it makes screws, screwdrivers, etc. But you know, only want to make a hammer at this time. Instead of going into this vault and pulling all of the instructions, because it's just one large, you know, string of information, to make just one tool, what you do is you send a request to this vault, asking it to send a copy of the instructions to make a hammer only. So the manager in this vault is gonna send you a small message, small piece of information that is exclusively for making this tool, the hammer. So this is the message in here. And it's just for the, for the hammer instead of making everything that you can make. So this is pretty much what, what the cell does. Instead of pulling all of the DNA to make all sorts of proteins your body can make, you send one message that contains the information of making one protein outside the nucleus where the translation happens. The message is sent in the form of RNA. 
a slightly different molecule from DNA to make the cell know that, okay, the RNA is the message, the DNA is the stored information. So in our cells, RNA, the only purpose of RNA is to make a protein. And once this protein is made, this RNA is removed. Message is no longer needed, but the DNA continues to be stored. However, when a cell want, wants to make a copy of itself, two copies, okay, or copy of itself, the genetic material that is stored, that's stored inside it needs to be copied as well, just like in the virus. Multiplying your genetic material is known as replication. of the genetic material. And the DNA in that case is the one that is replicated. You're making two copies, it's pretty much like in the factory, when they wanna make this factory that contains the vault, they wanna open another, another factory in a different country. They replicate the information in that vault and send it to the second factory. To be accurate scientifically, making a message Making a message is known as transcription. Creating the tool out of this message is translation. I might have uh, described it in a confusing way here. When I said transcribe is copy, in fact, it's just transcription is just converting one type of genetic material to a different type of genetic material, which we'll talk about more at the higher level. So it's like converting DNA to RNA. Um, whereas copying is replication. I hope this video was not too complicated compared to the first one. But the idea is that we reached a high level of understanding of the subject by understanding the most basic idea. In the next video, the picture is gonna be complete. And I think it's a good idea to move to the next video to have a full understanding of why I talked about these concepts now. Until then, thank you for watching.